everybody, welcome to Turquoise Skies, Digging Deep. Uh, Unji is here and I totally just cut her off and took over the show. <laughs> it's alright. It's uh, Shep, Shep here, we've got a very special guest, uh, Roland Begay and his beautiful jewelry. We're going to do some talking with him about his techniques and how he makes these beautiful, uh, this beautiful jewelry. Uh, stay tuned, we'll be right with you. All right. I need a drink too. Hello, everyone. We're, we'll give everyone a few minutes to get here. Uh, we're here at Turquoise Skies. Uh, Turquoise Skies is a jewelry store here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, we're located just outside of Uptown, uh, 8106 Manal. And on Wednesdays, uh, we try to do more of our digging deep into our, our community, um, specifically talking with artists and everyone else in the Southwest that has something to do with our industry. Today we've got Roland Begay, and uh, I've admired your work for a long time. I've yeah. seen your pieces in every now and then. They're hard to find. I feel yes. like... Yes, they are, because people always buy them. They buy them, and then they don't give them up, and they pass no. them down, and no. I, I don't see them. I've, I've had a couple pieces, and, and I saw you on Facebook, oh, and okay. it was like, oh, there you are. Oh, and I reached out and said, hey, you should come on the show and show everybody uh, your work. Uh, yes. Overlay, specifically, we call it storyteller overlay. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask a little bit about how, how you do this because I know we've got a lot of other people asking. Let's uh, see, where do I start? I don't even know. <laughs> so let, let's take a look at this bracelet real fast. Can I get camera? Do you check this out, everyone? Um, so this is uh, running, running horses. Running, the running horses bracelet. You can see that. I guess that light's a little bright. There we go. Maybe I should turn this off. Or turn it down a little bit. Yes, I, I cut all that out or saw out just all freehand. No drawing, just uh, out of borderline. That's all I put on there and everything's just freehand. Even the stamp is just freehand. No line to follow, just the middle. That's it. Freehand. Yes. Did you always so that freehand? Yes. Did you always do it? You never had to draw, draw it out, or did you just get some? Long time ago, you used to, but not no more. You just learned. No, you just eyeball it. And... So it's a great question. What is freehand? Well, freehand is where you don't draw the pattern. You just you just start punch a hole and start sawing. So so check this out, everyone. I, this is what we're talking about. Do you see this silver? He's not he's not pre-drawing these with pencil or or, or marking them. He's drawing these as he's cutting with a handsaw. So that's what we call freehand. You just can't, you, you can't easily replicate that. This is all just cutting with a saw. It just blows my mind. And the detail you get, just the realism of these horses. I guess you call it drawing with a saw. Drawing with a saw. Freehand. So that, that is how... This is what it started with, like that. So, th th so we're starting with a piece like this, that's just blank, and then taking a handsaw. I don't know if I have a handsaw down here. Probably not. Upstairs. So do that, and this is how they come out. And then after, after you cut everything out, this is the, there you go. You get that. These are all free cut, by hand with the handsaw. Yeah, that one I was, I was. When I was cutting towards the end, I was looking at it, I was thinking, oh, I'm going to end up with a big space. Right here? So, yes, so I just put a coat in there. Yeah, there you go. You so you, usually I put like a, a mesa or something like that, but today, this morning, I said, I'll just put a coat there. Yeah, that's that's perfect. That coat was meant to be. Yeah, so there was going to be a big space there. and Amazing, everyone. You're getting, Otherwise, you're getting some... you know, if there's no space, it's usually it's like this, see? So then, this is why we call this overlay. We have uh, a piece laid on top of the other piece like this. There you go, and it's overlaid. So you're getting a layer of silver layered on top of another layer of silver. And then there you go, this one's been soldered. Ready, ready to stamp. Ready for stamping and, and then and finishing. So here you go. Oh. I, get, I make different width. So every piece is different. Every horse is, look at the different strides, every step there in the horse. And then, and then pieces are hand stamped. 
And then you get that beautiful contrast with the oxidation in the back. Yeah, lots of good comments. Brenda loves the cult. Mary's asking, how much are your bracelets if you were going to sell these? Well, they retail for $390. That's not bad. Well, that's what people that's tell me. That's a great me. price. That's what people tell me because they think I'm underpricing myself. But I tell them, you know, I I cater to the common folks to where people won't make a lot of money all the time. So people yeah. with less money can afford it. So that's always been my... I've, I've seen pieces like this that are cast that don't have the energy that you put into them yes. with your with your free hand. Uh, and just the fact that you're cutting all those out by hand and the time it takes, that's a that's a deal. That really is great. Well, yeah, I guess it is. So. Then I always make them different sizes. Every Yeah, I've noticed it. We've got a couple different sizes here. And that, that's the size of the wrist, but also the width that you're doing. And yes. I start from 3 8 inch width and then a half inch, 3 quarter inch, 1 inch, 1 and 3 quarter, or yep. 1 and a quarter, oh, oh, man. 1 and a half. Wow, that's thick. Yes. So, beautiful. It, it, w would you like to sell these today if I have someone? Sure, I'd love to sell some of them. Okay, well then, everybody knows the drill. If we're selling uh, the bracelets, let me get a size on there for you. We're going to call the bracelets number one. Let's see. This would be a fit uh, a six, a six and a quarter to a six and three eight inch wrist. Okay. That, that would fit me actually if I opened it up a little bit. Huh? I'm about a six and a half. And this one would be about a six and five eighths or less. Six and five eighths or less. Yes. Yeah, that'll that'll actually fit me good. I'm a six and a half. Yes. So let me show that right here. So well, I'm upside down. Or I guess the horses are facing me. And then this one's a full, a full seven inch. Seven inch. Yes. So there we go. Seven inch. So if you if you're interested in one of these, uh, you're welcome to reach out. These are only going to be here today. Uh, we're not going to keep these over the weekend or anything. Um, but these are are three ninety. And then what else? Well. Uh, I wanted to just ask about you, who you are, and uh, I'm just me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show off your hallmark here, and then we can okay. we'll talk about this design too. So if you're uh, if you're looking at jewelry and you see this mark here, R H Begay, uh, that is Roland H Begay, and what what does H stand? Actually, H stands for Hogan. Hogan? Yes. My my grandpa used to build. I guess he built Crown Point. When he was younger, he okay. brought out all the log, logs from from the mountains. Yeah. So his his name was Chalahawan. So when the white people came, so they gave him Hogan. Hogan. Yes. <laughs> so that's his name, Chalahawan, and Navajo. Okay. Because he was building, I guess really he's building Crown Point, you know, bringing all the logs all the way from the mountains. Yeah. To build whatever was whatever needs to be built there so that's that's how that hold on are you and are you from crown point my dad is okay i'm actually from joan ranch a place called jake cut the storekeeper was hard of hearing so the navajo way is description so it's jake cut <laughs> I, I i know uh i know a couple of families in the crown point area uh, uh -huh. the uh uh, Smith family and uh, the Henry family. Uh, I'm not uh, really familiar Henry. because you know I'm just I just bring my dead rabbits to Stain Rock. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 you so uh, how long does it take here to get to drive into Albuquerque today? Uh, it's usually about two and a half hour drive, give, yeah, two, or, give or take. Well, we really appreciate you coming all the way here and spending yes. your time with us. And I've been looking forward to it ever since. You know, I got invited, so. Yeah. At times I'd be nervous, but then again, it's a, just be yourself. Yeah, just be yourself, and we just chat. I know I, Angie's, like, ready to get on the camera here. I, I kind of oh, took no, over. It's just, I'm just and then the boss lady wanted to put a shirt on, and said, no, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> it's real authentic here. 
Yeah, um, so even she even wanted me to put pants on. Usually I wear the cutouts or shorts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you wore your sleeves for us today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nope, not that, not that bad. T-shirts, I'm okay with. Yeah, it looks good. Yes. So can we talk about this design? Yes, that's a Navajo wedding basket. I guess traditionally they, um, when a couple gets married, they get a basket like that that they're supposed to keep as long as they're married. So that's why I think it became known as Navajo wedding basket. I had a wedding basket at my wedding. But then people use it as a ceremonial, you know, holder. Yeah. Whenever they're having a... It's a wedding basket right here. And this is a Hogan too. Yes. Oh, right? Yes. Sold. You got it's one sold, huh? It looks like you sold one of your bracelets. All right. The so. 6.25, this one here, that one's going to go to Claudia on YouTube. Oh, wow. Thank so you. So I'm going to take this one back here so we can write the name down. And one to Sheila too. And Sheila's going to take one. But if it's... If the size are too big, you can always order one. I can make another one. Yes. Well, you heard that, ladies. If you'd like one, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. If you'd uh, like to uh, contact us on Facebook, please join our inner circle. Uh, Holden will put the link in the description below. And yeah, uh, Sheila's going to take this one. Something. Oh, thank some, you, some, Sheila. You got Sheila? Something that we do on the show is uh, when someone buys something for us, we give them a big thank you, and we just do a couple of little beats on the drum here. So uh, that's where you come in, son. grandson. There you go. <laughs> are you a drummer? Um, no. No, yeah, you are today. <laughs> <laughs> you so, want to be in the show, so here you are. <laughs> yeah, come on over just a little bit. All right. There you go. Don't blow my ears off. No, just kidding. <laughs> and just. Yep, just a couple of beats. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And can I make a shout out? Yeah, of course. Shout out to my auntie and sister. Better be doing your homework. <laughs> <laughs> but so that's our way of saying thank you to you as the artist for bringing it in. Thank you uh, to where the bracelet is going. But also thank you for, you know, where did you learn to make your jewelry? I actually started with, I don't know if you know the Morgan family. The Morgan? Yeah, you know, is there Henry Morgan? Yes, Henry yeah. Morgan, his That's brothers. Right. Okay. My uncle used to hang around with him, you know, way back in the seventies. Yeah. I had nothing, you know, no idea how to do silverwork. But when I was in boarding school, there was a there was a teacher that came in to teach Inter to teach jewelry. silversmithing. Wow. So I asked, and he asked me, "Does your parents do silverwork?" And I told him, "No." My dad only does uh, leather craft, which I do. You know, I did leather craft before I did silver work. So then he says, "Well, you can't take the class then." I was like, "Why not? Why? Why are all the the staff taking them? I don't think they have anybody that's silversmithing." So he just brushed me off, and that was it. That was it. Yes, that was it. And then I was at, I was hella grudge against him. He, he he did silver work too, but you know that's all. And then look at you now. You're yes. Cutting out the horses freehand. Yeah. Maybe 10, 15 years down the road, he wanted to buy some work from me. So yeah. I was just. Did you remind him of that story? <laughs> no, I didn't say anything. But I just sold him some work. So. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not a person to hold not a hold grudge. grudge or anything. No, no. But then you, you you're you're closer to the Morgan family, so I'm sure they. they yes, did. I guess they're distant cousins or something like that. Okay. On my grandpa's side. Yeah. Anyway, my, my uncle was hanging out around with him. So one one week, or I don't know when it was, it was like on a Monday. My uncle came. He's he's you know he we're the same age, so he came over to me and he said, "Hey, do you have any money?" And I said, "Why?" He said, "Well, the boys need some." some silver money. At the time, I guess they were, they were casting ring shanks for Phil Woodard in the jewel supply. Yep. So they said, you gotta buy, you know, maybe a hundred dollars worth of silver. Uh, what do you call it? Casting grain. Yep. And we go back and we make rings and then we sell it at the end of the day back to Phil. 
I was kind of hesitant because, you know, they were boozing a little bit. So I was like, I hope I don't get anybody in trouble. Yeah. But anyway, I just went ahead and, and did it. So I went over there and then they said, okay, let's go. Let's go to Gallup. And we went over there and we bought, I don't remember, maybe like 80 bucks worth of uh, casting grains. At the time, it, at the time, silver was only worth like dollar forty three cents. You know? Yeah, yeah, big difference now. Yes. So we, they, then I went home. You know, my uncle said, you know, everything will be okay. But in his day, they, they took it in, and then they got some more silver, and they gave me double my money when I put it in there, and I was, I was good with that. Yeah, a little I, light bulb I, went off. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't do any work, so. Yeah. So I just left it at that, and then a few months later, he came back again and said, hey, we're broke, so we need some more silver. <laughs> <laughs> you became a silver investor. Yes, at the time, yes. And then, but this time, they invited me over to help watch and do some casting. Yep. And they, they, they had me do some casting by the end of the day and sanding and all that and packing the the dirt, the, the, the dirt, sand, yeah. yes, the sanding, and that's what got my interest. And then I started casting with them. Then there's an old gentleman. His name was uh, Leon Ingraham. Anyway, he had a Zuni Sacred Mountain jewel supply right there in Gallup. I used to sell uh, cast bracelets to him. Then one day he says, he asked me, "Do you know how to do a storyteller bracelet?" And I'm like. Huh? What? What's the story told me? I have to talk to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "No, no, no. I have a. I forget what tribe was. He, he had done a, some figures on the bracelet. He showed me, and I, I looked at it and I said, I could try. So that's how the storyteller came about in '74. So he picked up a saw and never I looked picked back. Picked up a saw, but first, I, while I was doing some other things like." different designs like yay bracelets mm -hmm. used to do a lot of yay bracelets we used to do like kind of like a rug designs you know because it's simple straight cut and everything but i didn't put no texture in there that came years later so that's how i started and then he he kept ordering and kept ordering finally he says can you do gold on silver i said i could try so he gave me the gold so i did a lot of gold on silver bracelets and gold, solid gold, 14 karat gold. Oh my gosh. He provide the gold he for you? He provided everything and I just worked it and he paid me, no questions asked. And yeah. I was living in the Hog Hagen. Wow, no. <laughs> <laughs> All that money coming in, but you know. See, so you got pretty good at soldering then as well. Yes, I did. You know, you, you figure out shortcuts, you know. Yeah. Everybody so has their own, them all up and everybody has their own way and you know so I started doing that and then then on through the years I started doing horses he said can you do animals so I said yeah I can my first horses were they were just grazing either grazing or standing around or just walking yeah but years later I started doing running horses so I haven't gone back to grazing horses, grazing ever since, horses huh? unless somebody asks us and then I used to start, he used to provide turquoise. I used to set turquoise. And then, what do you call it? Coral. They were all them dark corals. Yeah, those oxblood dark corals. Yes, he used to have me set those on a gold bracelet. Oh man, they were nice with gold bracelet. Wow, yeah. So I started doing that and he just gave me a handful or he didn't count it, he just said, here. Just you know, do what you can with it. With just gold. a handful of gold. Here you go. No, oh, the the coral. Oh, the coral is like gold. Just just it's just as expensive as gold these days. Oh, yeah, that's what I hear. That's what I hear. Yeah, it's hard to find hard to find anymore, especially those dark dark ones. Yeah, I still have a few pieces. The the Chinese these days are farming it, but it's coming out white, and so they're dyeing it red uh, to try yeah, to make that's, it. It's that's just, what I hear. Yeah, not but, good. It's better the, than in the nineties. I kind of got away from. Setting stones, yeah, you know, turquoise or whatever, you know. So, ever since I've been just doing straight silver, yep. gold, gold on silver, and copper on silver. Copper on silver, and you did some copper on silver here. 
We've got uh, we've got a couple pendants in different sizes, and I, and I love your texture. And, and look at the look at the look at the texture in there. Even in the oxidized areas, can you see that? It resembles the basket all the way around, even weaved. on the basket backside. weaved. And this right here is the overlay of copper. And uh, this design is actually a hogan. There's the door for the hogan right there. And uh, it's a very special symbol. But uh, yeah, stunning is right. Look how thick that is. It's like even the, the side is finished. Even the side, you got that coin finish or that edging, that texture there. That uh, that pendant. If you're interested in any of these pieces, um, you can feel free to contact us after the show at our inner circle, and uh, and we'll, we'll connect you with the artist. And I do do earrings. Yep. So these That's are the smallest earring. Someone was asking if you could do a custom wedding set. How can people reach you? Uh, Facebook. Facebook. Or phone number. Or email. Okay. If can you, we put some of that up? Yes. If you contact us, uh, we'll connect you. Uh, okay. if, if reach out to us on uh, just to keep spam down and things like that, because we've, re we, we've, we've released a couple phone numbers on our show, and then we don't want you to get all the yes, spam. Yes, I understand. And stuff. Yes. So if you're interested in reaching out, um, if you need some custom work, um, if, of course, it only only if you want to, um, we'll we'll connect you uh, with the artist, and you can order from them directly. And here's a one inch one inch earring. One inch earring. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and, and you do this in a whole set. You do a ring, you do a bracelet, you yes. do a, whatever. Well, you... I've been asked to do belts. I've been asked Ooh, to yeah. do necklace, but I haven't gotten to those two yet. Big concho or big yes. squash blossom necklace. Yes. Beautiful. I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to do it. the connections. I'm going to use beads or I'm going to just use half round wire or something. You know? Do you make beads? Have you made any of those bench beads? Yes. Yeah. I just stamp them. It takes, it takes so much time. It's so long. Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think uh, the energy that goes into those beads, I, I love to convey that and really show that off because, you know, a lot of times we've got some, we've got some machine pressed beads here. Yes. And, and it's a shortcut, but it really doesn't, you know, the, the, the work that you do with those, with the thicker metal and be able to hand make those beads, I really wish I could convey how long and how much energy it takes to make those because it takes a long time. Yes, it does, especially, you know, getting it right. Getting it perfect. Yes. And you are a perfectionist a little bit. I can see that. No, really. I just put, put it together. You've just been doing it over a long time. I've been doing it a long time enough to, it just comes together. Yeah. And if you make a mistake, you can always hide it. Or some people like it. They say it's unique. Yeah. You never find another one like that. Yeah. Because they like that mistake. Yeah. Well, just like the colt, right? Yes, that was a mistake, but oh yeah, well. This, this little colt right here, their space was too big, and now we have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> There's even, at times, a foot horses coming out of the, the outline. Oh, wow. Because I ran out of space, so I just put the horses ahead, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, you know, that's a, how would you say? That's freehand, you know, you don't plan, you just... When you're not drawing it out. You just I, come up and work, work I, around it. I would have never known, I thought you maybe took a stencil or something, you know, and, and did it, but if you do that, that's pretty amazing. J just your uh, precision. The size of it, even, you know, the narrowness. Spacing and, and yeah, everything. The lightness. We've got Ty Winslow asking how much your pendants are. These, these pendants. Which pendant? The two-inch pendant is... My God. I gotta think. It's not good for me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that one's two. Two forty six. Two forty six retail. Yes. So we've got two hundred forty six dollars. We'll call this one number two. Two inch pendant. It's two inches. Yes. If you don't mind? I'm gonna reach right around here and sure. grab a, a measuring tape to show everybody. Uh -oh. Is he going to dress me up? <laughs> <laughs> you just get a measurement here and we'll get you a suit next time you're in. No. So we've got uh, two inches there, the length of the basket. It hangs two and a half with the bale. Got a good size bale there. 
about half inch um, measuring on the outside. So this was, what did you say, 246? Yes. 246 for the large. Well, I'm wishing I, I, I should have finished more. <laughs> right? Well, I, and, and I apologize to everyone out there. We usually have our artists guest shows for the jewelry sales on Saturday. Um, I, I really wanted to bring you in whenever you could and yes. talk about your, your technique and, and just meet you. So. Yes. We're, having, um, we're gonna just refresh real quick because comments aren't posting. Comments prices. aren't posting? Our comments. Okay. Um, do you wanna jump in here and do your thing? Oh no, you're doing great. I do wanna, I was curious about your history training horses. Oh, training horses. That's interesting. Well, that one has just got in there by accident because my wife's a bell racer and I always backed her. We've been all over the country chasing barrels, her chasing barrels, and me just spending money on fuel. <laughs> <laughs> That's the rodeo life, right? <laughs> yes. Hurry up and get there and wait. Anyhow, um, when she bought horses, there was a there's sometimes she didn't get along with the horses, so she just, I told her just get rid of them, and she just kept hanging on to them, hanging on to them, and then finally, it's one day, I said, you know what, I can just play with it, and then I started doing what she did, start going around the barrels, but I made sure they were really broke. Got in there by accident. They were really broke to where anybody could ride in, like if the true barrel horses they have no stop it's that's my you know how would you say that's the way i see them the girls would be trying to stop them and they're like runaway horses and they get to the fence and all of a sudden they stop <laughs> so i started training them my way and i made sure the horses kind of ran at your speed not not a full, how would you say, really fast run, but I made him to where... Like a trot? No, more a run, but at a, how would you say? Controllable pace? Controllable run. So I did that, I put him in that, in my horses like that. Then I started, people started asking me when I was running an NBHA, which is National Barrel Horse Association, so anybody can run, men, kids, girls, whoever. As long as you had a barrel horse, it was for the barrel horses. That's why it's called National Barrel Horse Association. So I started going to there, and then sometimes I used to sneak off and be in Kansas all by myself <coughs> while, the, while the wife was working, and I just go. So that's how I um, started my barrel racing. Lacey Hennessy is gonna purchase the pendant the number two. Oh, thank you. And uh, Brenda Rose is asking if any of the earrings are for sale today. Yes, it is. Well, anyway. So, uh, was your wife a champion barrel racer before or after you started training the horses? It was before. Okay. <laughs> she's, she's the Indian world champion back in 1980, oh, wow. 1988, and then 2006, she became a champion again. And then in 2017, she, um, Induct, got inducted to the uh, Indian Rodeo Association Hall of Fame. So wow. she's a Hall of Famer. That's cool. And she still runs barrels, tries anyway. <laughs> but I criticize her all the time. <laughs> she's not running fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty incredible. Yes, but you know, I, I think the horse is taking care of her too now. So we definitely know your horses. Just the detail on some of these horses and the. Well, uh, the I differences up, in the stride. I grew up with them, trying to catch them. They used to run off from me. I'd be crying trying to catch them when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> running, running back home, and they would miss the corral, and they'd have to go run in the woods and try to turn them back and hope somebody is at the house to corral them, help yeah. me corral them. So I'd miss the corral about two or three times and find it, get them in. It's, those are long afternoons, aren't they? Mornings. Long mornings? Yes, yes sir, mornings. 
I'm going to show all these off just to show how these are working. And, and okay. Uh, maybe we this this next pendant. Do you have? Is that for sale? The, everything's for sale here. There are orders, but they're for sale. I can always make more. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a good thing about being you know making jewelry on your own. So this is just uh, just to show off here what part of the process this is in. You're no, I'm trying to figure out what this one was. <laughs> This one's a, an inch and a quarter. I forget what the prices were. I think it was one ninety six. One ninety six. Yes. So I'm off a couple dollars. So what, you know? <laughs> Item number three we're gonna put up here is gonna be the pendant. One ninety six. This is a. It's gonna hang. Uh, one and a quarter. The. The basket's one and a quarter. It's gonna hang about one and three quarters with the bale. 196 handmade wedding basket pendant. There we go, we got the RH, RH Big A Hallmark. That'll be item number three. And then your, your earrings. The earrings, the one inch. One inch earrings? Yes. You have a couple different variations here, don't you? Yes, sir. So, so we've got uh, we've got these these posts. Post dangle. Post dangle earrings. You can see you've got that oxidized bead up there with the post. And you have your price on these? Those two hundred and eighteen. Two hundred and eighteen dollars? No, sixteen, I'm sorry. Two hundred and sixteen dollars. Two could have made an extra two dollars. <laughs> <laughs> two sixteen for item number four. And mm. then We've got the, are these the same price? French, yes. French hooks, same thing, uh, but with the French hooks, item number 4B, we're going to do 216 on those as well. And then we've got, what are these? Uh, those are 11 16th inch earrings. 11 16ths? Yes, sir. There you go, you can see that there on just uh, The sets of these and how much are these sets? Those are 108. 108. 108 dollars for the silver copper earrings. This will be item number five and I'm sure that is the price the same across the board for yes all the same sizes. For those there and then we have uh, we've got two of those 5a and then we've got post angle. The post angle, the small post angle. Again, one. I make oh eight. I make yeah. clips too when special orders, but they're a little bit more pricey because of the just because of the clip. Just the t and the time. Yeah. Well, not the time. It's just that. What do you call it? Brenda Rose is taking a pair of those. All right. Thank you. We need to do some thank you drumming. You want to introduce your grandson? Oh, look, it's my grandson. He's sleeping over here. I was kind of <laughs> <laughs> His name is Shaman. Hey, Tom. Shaman. Hello. So how many were sold? Two? Uh, we just sold, we, we, you know, we sold one earlier while we were talking, so you might as well do two. Lacey and Brenda. Thank you, Lacey and Brenda. Okay, here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and Shaman, you want to get into silversmithing too, it sounds um, like. Yeah, so about a year ago, I actually ran into a shop, yeah. just kind of walked in on him and told him I wanted to get into it. And from there, just started picking up little things here and there, soldering, um, basic stamp work, and yeah. I made him do all his soldering on his own, that's it. So you got to learn, you got to do it. Just throw in the fire, huh? Yes, you go. sir. Yep. <laughs> and you got what piece that you made there on your wrist? Um, yeah, so this is a, um, my own bracelet. Um, I made three of them, one for myself, one for my little sister, um, who should be doing her homework, and one for my father. <laughs> <laughs> and so what I did here was I just basic stamp work, um, but I combined it to two metals. Is it okay if I show it on the camera? Yeah. Yeah. This is not for sale, everybody. <laughs> There we go. We've Maybe got the price is right. He might sell it. The two metals. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. The price is right. Yeah, right. If you're welcome to, if you want to. Uh, we've got the two metals, and this is, and you're just starting, and your stamp work looks like that. It runs. Yes, in the, that's his first runs, time. Runs in the family, I guess. 
We've got some beautiful uh, plants there. We got the the vines with the leaves mm -hmm. and the and the flowers around that piece. Yes. Shaman Tom, do you have your your hallmark on um, there yet? No. So I was, we were supposed to get that figured out, sorted, and get a whole uh, stamp made for that. Yeah. But um, thank you. For I just that. Uh, thank you, and uh, I actually just did my initials <laughs> just for now. Yeah, that works. That yeah. worked. Yeah, the whole time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great. All right. Um, all right. Did we have any other questions out there? I actually had a whole bunch of. Uh, <laughs> What do you call it? Squash blossom pendant. But, and the wedding basket. But I ended up hitting uh, Indian market. Indian market? So I ran to some customers and they bought it all. So I had a good week. Well, good. Yes. How, how, was, the, how was it up there this week? I heard there was, uh, it was there weren't as many people, but the, it was a great crowd and... Yeah, there was, I didn't think there was a lot of people, but I think what hurt, hurt what hurt them was they said they were going to charge just to go shop at an in the market. I, I didn't see why they would charge people just to go see your, the native jewelry. Yeah. You know, so I think a lot of, I think it hurt them. Yeah, yeah. So, but when I got there, I just walked in there and let nobody... There was nobody made. Nobody charged you $7? Nobody, yeah, nobody was <laughs> charging, so I just walked in. Well, actually, the first day, I didn't get out of one building because I kept running into all my friends and my customers. Yeah. And I just barely made it out to the opens. By then, everybody was packing up. It was 5 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> but meanwhile, my wife was running in a Socorro, running barrels. So I drove back and forth between Socorro and... Santa Fe. That's a little bit of a drive. Yes, it is. Well, the same same way for home. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thirty minutes less. So. <laughs> yeah. We, we uh, New Mexico is big. There's big distances between places here. Yes. Let's see. Claudia is asking, can we please explain a little bit about the story in the storyteller, specifically this one, because I think uh, she purchased one of your running horses. Do you have? Any? That's those are just running horses, like what you would see out out in the open. It's not really a storyteller. I think it was just a. It's a style that we call a the given story. name from the traders, but the bracelets I make is more like um, what you would have seen at home. I remember seeing my grandpa, my grandma, and all the animals they had, and all the horses. My grandmother weaving. My grandpa chopping wood. Grandpa herding sheep, grandma herding sheep. That's really all it is, but I guess they gave it a fancy name. Storyteller. But for me it's just a home a home scene, what I remember seeing. So that's I don't know how else to explain it. Can we see can we see your ring? Oh. Is, did you make this ring? Yes. I forgot he had one of us. <laughs> He's hiding it over there. Yeah, you can tell one. This is a this is a very traditional what I what, this is what I would call a traditional storyteller. Yes, like home scene. This is a home scene, and this is not for sale, everyone. Um, but you have that home scene. You've got the home there. You've got that's, that's uh, where you. My grandma used to uh, hang out the blankets after we pee on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. That's that's how it is. <laughs> and then. They got the clouds yeah, and the necessity the, house. the necessity house there, and of course the horse. And then the bread oven, oven, bread oven, bread oven. Then the firewood stacked, stacked up standing. Keep, oh, we used to see firewood like that, but now everybody just throws it and piles it up. And you got the wagon there with yeah. the horse, and, and uh, there's the, the bread oven there. No, that's a barrel. Oh, it's, it's a barrel. barrel. Barrel stand. Barrel stand. Well, Grandpa always had a barrel stand, so where he unloaded his his water, you know, full full uh, barrel with water. He used to always get it off like that, and so that's what it is right there. Rebecca uh, is asking what your wife's name is. My wife's name is Genevieve Sukalarkis. She's not 
full Navajo, but she's um, half Navajo and half Greek. I don't know how that works, but she's Greek. Greek that's, Navajo. That's why she has that long last name, Sukalarkis. That's a Greek name. Sukalarkis. Yes. So when she was running the pros, the announcers would, wouldn't know how to pronounce her name. So he used to call her Geneva T. <laughs> or G Genevieve with a long last name. So <laughs> that works. So that works. Huh? <laughs> um, Otherwise, they they slaughter the name. Yeah, <laughs> trying, trying to trying to say it. That's a hard one. I I I don't know if I want to try right now. I'll probably mess it up. It took me about thirty years to <laughs> finally spell it. So you're the one that said long last name in it. Yeah. Yeah. Or G T. <laughs> GT? Yes, sir. Um, any other questions we have on there? Please explain. Congratulations. So glad you did well at the Indian Market. And you didn't even, you didn't have a booth or anything. You just went into... No, I didn't. I just wanted to go see my buddies and I just had... I always carry extra jewelry that I made, you know, when I finish what... Actually, they were all orders, you know. I just, I just put it in the car and said, I'm going to the Indian Market, so... That's what I did. Yeah. And then I, I sold a few to traders, so which was good. You know, people that were selling, what did they call those? Those beets. The bench beets? The beet, you know, those beets that you make. What do you call it? The anyway? bench beets, the Navajo pearls? The... Yeah, the Navajo pearls. Yeah. So there's, there's a guy, he really liked them, so he bought four of them all, all at once. So he put them on those Navajo pearls, and I don't know what he did. He hasn't got back to me, so he might have sold, sold them. So. We can't seem to keep them around very much. They're, they're harder to get these days. There's not as many people making Yes. just because of the, how, how hard they are to make. Time-consuming. Yeah, very time-consuming. Yes, and then there was another customer. She kept bugging me and bugging me. Finally, I ran to her there, too, and she bought two of them again so which which was good and then another customer a long time ago i used to do business with his mother but when his mother passed i guess he started he finally we i finally saw him there and I said hey you got old because <laughs> <laughs> i used to when i used to go visit his mother he used, he used to be a kid you know he was maybe about 10, 15 years old, something yeah. like that. And now he's got white hair and everything. So, hey, you got old. Since. <laughs> Likes happening to all of us these days. <laughs> yes, anyway, he he ended up buying some and then some earrings. And then he gave me more orders, so, which is good. Then I had a few more left. And then I was the next day on Sunday, and then I ran into my my brother cousin brother anyway my my mother's brother's son so so they call himself you know they call him brother mm -hmm. anyway his his daughter had graduated a few years back and I always wanted to give her a set of earrings then I had those um, squash blossom pendants so I just gave her one so she was happy about it oh yeah Always happy to get a pair of earrings, especially with your quality here. No, those, those big two-inch baskets. Oh, really? Yes. Those are nice earrings to receive. No, they pinned it. They pinned it. Oh, okay. And so she said, I'm good with it. So I had to ask anyway. I was trying to be cheap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sharon Allison's asking if we can go back over this jewelry. Uh, and then we have Michael asking... Uh, do you have any suggestions to help people who want to uh, do overlay, if they want to do overlay? What kind of suggestions? Well, ask, ask a lot of questions. Yeah, ask a question. Can you be more specific, Michael? Uh, let's, let's look at this jewelry here real fast. Number one, we've got uh, almost size seven. That's wrist. a size seven, yeah, this is a size seven. Six, six length. <coughs> Excuse me. Size seven bracelet, and this was three ninety. Is that right? Yes. Three hundred ninety dollars. Yeah, good memory. <laughs> I get lost all the time. Number <laughs> number three. 
Uh, we've got the pendant for, uh, this is number three, number two sold for 196. Yes. Yes. Number one sold. Number one sold. All right. So Sharon Thank Allison. you. Who? Uh, Sharon Allison, right there. Glen Glen Holly Farms. Oh, okay. That, that's her real the name. Farm. That's her. That's her farm. She has a. They got a ranch down there in Texas. All right. He woke up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I have a lot of people that have horses and farms. They order a lot of horse bracelets or cow bracelets. Uh, you have yet to do um, longhorns. I'm trying to figure out how to put the longhorn on a flat piece. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe he the, has to be looking at the, the kind of the, the cow looking sideways. I think is how I'm going to do it. But yeah, it hasn't hasn't come to fruit yet. Then I have orders for a wolf bracelet, which I haven't done. I have orders for buffalo bracelets, which I haven't done. So. In time, I always tell people, in time. What about uh, pigs? Pins. Pigs. Pigs. I have pet pigs. <laughs> I've only done a few of them, which was like a home scene. <laughs> but the guy had a pig for it, so I put some pigs in there instead of sheep, like I usually do. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, she's got a pig farm, basically. <laughs> yes, and then I do, every now and then, I get special orders for... What do you call those? Turtle bracelets. Oh, like the overlay turtle yes. on the top? Yes, I put a, a big turtle on top of the bracelet. So it's just kind of, I guess some people are, they're in their tribe, they have different clans, so they're mm -hmm. in the turtle clan. Right, like there's a Hopi, and Hopi there's a turtle clan. Yes. Yeah. So they, every now and then somebody track me down and That's make bracelets like that. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so. Uh, Michael, a more specific question was, any special kind of heating techniques involved uh, when, you, when you're doing the overlay? Do you use two torches or do you just have one? I just have one torch. You just pull it along? You just keep moving your torch. Don't, don't get stuck in one place, otherwise you're going to melt your figure. Because mm. it'll, it'll just melt. So you got to keep that torch moving. Constantly, constantly, until you see the color. I do. I, I actually do it with my left. <laughs> so you just kind of move it back and forth. And you just keep an eye on it, and you spin. How? Where would I, where, where would I go? I guess you can see. You kind of hold it a split second at the ends, where it's solid. Mm -hmm. Like I'll hold it here and then move across, and then I'll call. Kind of like then get these guys as hot. You know, evenly, and then you just kept keep doing that. And the, I, there are different techniques I do. Sometimes I'll feed I'll feed my uh, solder from mm -hmm. a wire solder from here while I'm moving it. And you pull it pull it down the. And you just keep moving, and the solder will go flow. Yeah. Then about halfway, and then I do the same thing right here, and then touch the solder this way. Oh, I see. Then we'll go. It follows the heat. Yes. And then there's other times. It all depends on how how in a hurry I am. <laughs> that first technique is when I'm really in a hurry. But when I have a whole bunch, I I do the same thing, but I put solder on the bottom plate first. Okay. You put. A dab here, and then a dab here, a dab, you know, on the edges, not in the middle. On the edges, put maybe, uh, like this one, I probably put three dabs. One, lines, one, two, three, and then some of the in, some of the in here. Then on the bottom piece, I just run a, a solder across like this. All the way from, what would you say, from this, from here to here, I just run a solder, right? Right, right along the edge. You have to be fast. So if you stay there, it's going to melt and there's going to be too much solder. You have to be careful with that coal. So you got to go move it. And then, after I put my solder on there, and then I put, and then I lay this on top. And oh, this, I see. Okay. And it's already even. And then when you get yeah, the heat, you just it'll heat even. it, and it'll, then you just start this in, and it'll just 
Depends, I guess, if you're right-handed or left-handed. Yeah. Mine is, I use my torch on the left hand. Yeah, I, I, I think a, a lot of people are using the torch with their left hand, and then you can have the fine detail with your right. Yes, you because, stuff. yes. So, yeah. so it, there's different techniques, really. Sometimes if it's really intricate work, like on those um, squash blossom pendants, I would put <laughs> interruption. <laughs> Big callback. Yeah. I put dabs of solder wherever I need. If you need to add a little bit more, you've got your right hand free. Well, I just put dabs of solder. I just pick it up with that tungsten. Yeah. And just put it there. Put it there. Oh, <laughs> oh busted. I want to show everybody again what, what, what he means by uh, freehand. Look at these horses here. We showed this at the beginning. He does not draw any patterns, doesn't pre-draw these with, with anything. These the are, these the are, only thing he draws is the outer, how would you say, the border lines. The border lines, you can kind of see there's a, there's a line that goes across there to give you give your starting and stopping point, but this is all basically drawn with a handsaw while he's cutting. So he's, as he's cutting, he's drawing out the horse. That's incredible to do by hand, free hand, free, just eyeballing it. Yes, sir. We have item number four that we, we just to continue along here for, what did you say, 246? Uh, no, two, that was good, but I, I, was, I have to be honest, 216. 216? <laughs> Which one's that? Yes, the, the, the ear, oh, 216. The earrings, the earrings yes. Yeah, two, 216 for the ear, for the one number, inch, number four. One inch earrings. And then was it 108 for number five? Yes, sir. So we've got number 5A, 108. We've got these uh, French hook dangle earrings. That's number 5A. And then number 5B, we've got the posts. Post angles. Post angles. I do solid post too. So you can always order that if you don't if you don't use these or wear these. So and then I do same size pendant. Okay. So you have the one inch uh, and then so this is that three? tiny one and this one they're pendants. Okay. I was finishing some of those, but I didn't get to finish them. If you wanted to do those with pendants, you're welcome to order those. We've got Brenda, uh, Barbara Thompson is going to take the last pair of friendship dangle earrings. All right. Thank you, Barbara. Okay, drummer boy. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> hey, calm down. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you very much. All right. A lot of compliments that you're getting in here on the feed. Um, I think we're we're running into our time now. Uh, oh, we still have about ten minutes or so. Is there any anything else? Any other questions you have here for Roland? Uh, now is your chance. We know that a lot of y'all don't have didn't get a chance to come to Indian Market. And you know, on a lot of people are at home. You know, and don't really get a chance to come out and meet the artists. So this yes. is a, this is a good chance to ask questions, say hi, and and if you had anything. And sorry to interrupt. You're going to say something. I was going to say uh, I do um, hat bands and those storytellers, and I do belts and storytellers, and I do link storyteller bracelets. Link bracelets. Yes. So yeah, the medallions all the way around. I got some on my. You think you can get it off the my phone pictures of them. I can show it on the camera if you got your. Uh, he stole. Yeah, he, he stole my camera. Right <laughs> Grandkids. Are there any galleries in Gallup or anywhere that have your jewelry? No, no gallery in Gallup. Just directly from you is the source. Yes, most of them directly from me, but I do a lot of um, museums and galleries, different different states. Mm, okay. This is the one I was talking about. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Look at those basket designs. And then... Uh, I had a friend that bought all four of those. He's a uh, basket maker. 
from Oregon. Wow, that is a that's awesome. Those are two inch oh pendants. I'd love to. Is that a bee? Hmm? Like, yes, that's a bee. Like a bee. How that, that bee came about bee. was I used to have a a sister in law that was pet pigol, but he passed. She passed, but she made a basket for my parents, which was about maybe 18 inches big. And one day I was kind of bored making storyteller, storyteller. And <laughs> then I was sitting visiting my parents and I saw that basket there and said, hey, that'll be a challenge to make. Especially with the, the way I finish it, like it's really weaved. So that, that was my first basket. I, too bad I didn't save it. <laughs> it's always nice to save your first one. Yes, but there's always, it's always yeah. customers always want customers always <laughs> customers always right. Uh, can we just show this uh, horse pattern one more time, Holden, please? So starting there uh, with that freehand cutting of the horse, uh, which would then end up like this, which would then be overlaid like that, and then uh, and then you've got your final bracelet here. This piece has already been sold. I just wanted to show you this final piece. Victoria, if you want to get a hold, please join our inner circle and contact us uh, if you want to get a hold of the artist and we will connect you to Roland. I'm also posting in there his Facebook um, page. There you go. And that's under Unji, so look for my... RH Begay Facebook page. That's my stamping on my jewelry. Sold number three, the well, pendant. Thank you. That's going to Samantha Young. Samantha, thank you very much. Ah, he's on the ball. Huh? <laughs> Don't push it. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't want me to push it. Oh, man, I was happy for him. Though. So did you... Oh, you did... You showed it off. Yeah, I right? showed that piece off. Do you have anything else in there? Well, these are all the different ones. Yep. And then, let's see. Mm. All free and cut too. Wow, no kidding. Look at this. That's a 3 8 inch bracelet. Can you see that? Oh, wow. Sheep and goat, a dog, little heels behind. What do you grandma. sell a bracelet like that for? How much? That's the same price as that 390. Three quarter, three quarter of an inch. Really? I know everybody thinks well, I'm cheap. Well, I know when I'm getting my mama for Christmas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> beautiful. This is storyteller there. That bracelet with that beautiful southwestern scene. Awesome. I was trying to find my uh, the link bracelet. Oh, how to get out? Artist is Roland Begay. And here to sit. I just done. About Two week, two weeks, two or three weeks ago. Here we go, going back into town, huh? You've got your your pickup truck. Yes, sir. Oh. Here we go. It's a set. You've got the ring and the and the bracelet there. The lady's cooking. At the late <laughs> cooking some bread. Oh, I see her. I didn't see her before, right there. Shade, shade house. Should I show these? Okay. You're welcome to. These are all. Is that stamp? Repose? Stamp. Yes. Out. That's uh, casting and stamped. A rolled stamped. Oh. One inch wide. Those are beautiful. Thank you. Do you still do oh. any stone work? Nope. Nope. I would if somebody provides a stone. Yes, I will. I'll give you some stones if you make me a piece. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try charge you double. <laughs> Let's see it. I got so many pictures here. Almost. Oh, here's that. Oh, there's there's the ring that'll match that set. There you go. Here's an idea of what a ring would look like in that uh, wedding, basket. wedding basket set. Hi Tia, I'm sorry you missed the beginning. We'll we'll be ending here soon, and then you can go back and watch it. Let's see. This 
Wow. Always working. Good, it keeps you young. Look at all these bracelets, these different wow. patterns, these different designs. These are all uh, that that genre, the traders named the storyteller overlay. Yes. Beautiful stuff. All right. I guess this is how they got. How do you look before the overlay? Before the overlay process, you've got those the cutouts there. It's hard to see the phone with the reflection and everything, but work in progress. Work in progress. Okay, we'll go way we'll we'll down here for the for the links. Okay, Brenda, you uh, we have uh, a set of number four. Thank you very much. The earrings, uh, these were 216. Uh, they're the inch dangle. They are, we've got some dangle studs there with the uh, ball, the oxidized pearl. And then we have the French hook, 216. That's no, item number four. And then item number five is the smaller, uh, about five sixteenths, is that what you said? For 108. Rug bracelets. Oh, I love those. My grandma was a weaver. There we go, number five, 108. That's all we have left. Wow. And my rug bracelets. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Can you see that? I'm in love. Rug bracelets. My grandmother <laughs> used to, was a rug weaver. I used to help her when I was a kid. It's beautiful. Come come home from boarding school and we'd be carding wool or spinning wool. Yeah, that's, I did that with my grandma too. That's my coming season bracelet. Snowflake bracelet. Snowflake bracelet? Yes, sir. Uh, chain bracelet? Mm-hmm. I had some orders for a belt like that, but I haven't gone oh, around to it. I can only imagine. You know, a big concho belt like yes, that? Yes, sir. That would be incredible. Beautiful. There's my rope pendants. They're like one inch by one and half or one and three quarter inch. There we go. Wow. Pendants. Square rug pendants. You can see the bale there on that side. Pretty awesome. Love your patterns. So you spent quite a few hours behind the bench. Every day. With that saw. Here's the link bracelets. Process. Okay. You can see the square links there. I gotta turn the phone the right way so it'll. There we go. Mm. Those are link bracelets. Beautiful work. Thank you. We have about a minute left. You guys are on time, huh? We I try guess. to be. It's hard. Yeah, we try to be. <laughs> But it don't work, right? I'm dabbling in engraving too. And this is a a piece I made for a guy that lost his uh, bit piece. Engraved sterling silver. It's a big roping that he gets. To, he won a bit, so. That's it. When will Roland be back? You'll have to come do a formal show with us, Roland, and uh, if you ever get, get manage to get enough inventory, yes, seems to go before you uh, <laughs> before you finish. Yes, they do. They, they there's another. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, look at that bracelet with the wedding basket on it. 
pretty awesome. Awesome stuff. Love to see these in person. I think we've got a, quite a few other people that love to see these. Can you please come back for an artist show with all these styles? Uh, okay. We'll we'll, we'll we'll stay in touch and we'll we'll keep asking you until until yes. you're able to come. Okay. Yeah, we're we're pretty grateful for people, having you swing by today. People ask have. me the size, so I have to put a pin in there just to, <laughs> just to tell. It's a good way to market. Yes, sir. Okay, I will. All right. All right, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, we will be inviting Roland back um, to one of our artist shows on Saturdays. Um, thank you for showing us. You're it, it's really great to see the whole process here. Yes. And, and especially, I'm just blown away by your, your freehand of these horses that you're drawing with your saw. That's yes. incredible. I guess I've been doing it long enough, so I just came freehand. Yeah, no well, kidding. Actually, did you, did you, I never really drew. Is this... You just got better at freehand. It seems like if I drew, it always changed while I was cutting. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I just, I think that's where I have to start picking up the freehand. Yeah. So I draw something, but mm -hmm. as long as I was cutting, then it just didn't look right, so I just changed it. Did you have a picture right there, and then you're, no. what's the picture? No. Just... I have no pictures. No? My picture's blank with it. Yeah. You just look out the window and look at your horse, right? But there's, well, there's a, there's a horse chart. Yeah. And then... Different stride or different, you know, loping or galloping, all that. So yeah, I, just, yeah. I just kind of look at the legs, and that's how I do my horses. Awesome. Well, but now I just do the horses just without looking up. Don't even need to anymore. No. Nope. One more look here at some of these these rug weave earrings. Man, I love that one. That's awesome. Yeah, well, enjoyed your company and. Thank you, everyone. We know your time is uh, precious as well. We appreciate you spending your time here with us. Uh, if you need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out here at the shop. Our phone number here is 505-862-9443. Please join our inner circle. Holden will put the link in the description below. Um, and that's a place that you can communicate with us. And we'd love to see some of your jewelry. And uh, if, if you share there, it's it's always great to see your collections. Um, so, and Roland, we'll, we'll invite you to the group as well, and you communicate with everyone. Okay, on sounds the, good. On the, there as well. And uh, I guess we'll be back tomorrow evening for our late show at five o'clock, five thirty, five thirty. We'll see you then. Thank you, everyone. Have Thank a good you. evening. Mm -hmm.